What is up there, Joe's Barbecue House and Review members? Today I'm going to show you an update on my mobile smoker. Okay, as you guys seen before, this was stage one. Go ahead, for those of you that hasn't seen my previous videos on this, I'll show you what it's all about. She is 20 foot long by eight and a half foot wide, which is the legal limit. What we have here is the fire boxes, which are made out of half inch steel, as you can see here. Then everything else that you see here is all made out of quarter inch steel. And coming over here are, is the warming boxes. And what we have here is a removable ash, print, ash pan and charcoal grate. So I could grill straight out of the warming boxes. Then here, my fabricator designed a carousel or a lazy Susan where I can hang meat over an open fire. That ought to be really cool and interesting. He also added these uh, drip catchers to where they'll just roll back into the firebox instead of oozing out of the doors there like it was doing. All right, coming over here, we have four of those 3,000 pound rated jack stands to where I could raise this trailer off the ground in case I ever have a flat on the highway or whatnot. That way I don't have to bring a separate jack. Here we have the stainless steel wrap fenders. We had added some stainless steel wrap above the doors. And as you guys can see, this one here is my manual side. This is also a reverse flow or regular offset. I can control that by the vents there on the top. Here you can see the racks. They are very long. i to pull them out here as you guys can see. Very, very deep. We also added the drip guards here. So that way if the rain comes down and through anything that hits this, it'll just fall back into the smoker part there. All right, I'll, also you guys are probably wondering how am I fitting this inside my garage? Well, if you look right there, we have hingeable stacks where they lock in here. I could fold these down. I could probably get a short video clip of how I do that, maybe in another video. But here is stage two of this mobile smoker. We have two Santa Marais. Very simple to operate. You just take your wheel, take this brake off. This here will allow you to adjust your cooking rack up and down. It also has stainless steel drip pans. These are also removable. Inside here is our firebox where you would put your coals and then put wood over the top, whatever you'd like to do. Here is a plate where when I'm done cooking, I could scrape all the ashes into this ash pan. That's right here. Just remove this pin, pull this out, go dump it, be on my way. And the reason why I wanted a place to catch my ash is if I'm at an event and it's time to leave while well, I could scrape all the hot ashes into that bucket there, put this plate on and go drive away. Here's our cool touch handles with our, you know, with the uh, vents there, which I leave wide open. Uh, we also added for weed burner, 
we added this, uh, or he added this fitting here for me. It's a quick disconnect. I just bought the parts from my local hardware store to convert my weed burner, and I use that to light the fire. All right, we also have heavy duty swing out tables, stainless steel. So when you're going down the road, so all you gotta do is lock it up here. And uh, there you go. They can swing out in any position you like. You can even go right in front of the smoker like this. And I can still open up my uh, storage box, which that storage box is gonna be converted into a cooler soon, dry and cold storage. We also had wrapped this with stainless steel. And again, all this is made out of quarter inch. Over here, you'll see the heavy duty bearing caps that are put on. Also has stainless steel slides on three sides. So when this thing goes up and down, it goes up and down like butter. Very heavy duty setup here, guys. Very nice, I already used them, I seasoned them. Okay, let's walk around. Okay, here on the other side, same thing, swing out tables. Come over here to the other Santa Maria. It's the same setup. Identical to the other one. Got the same fire system in here with the removable where I could put my ashes uh, inside these ash catchers. Cool touch handles. So over here we have our power center, which all I got to do here is put my extension cord in here. And this one here will operate the rotisserie side. But you can see all the racks in there. There's four very large racks. I can fit full foil pans in there, hotel pans. And then this here is an auxiliary switch for stage three when I put the roof on it. And what I have here is four receptacles for any accessories I may want to add. I can also hook that up to a generator as well, but I just use my house power for it. So there are 16 inch wheels, custom wheels with the heavy duty tires. It's got 10,500 pound rated tandems on it. And there you have it guys. My mobile smoker is just about finished. And tell me what you guys think about it. I'd also like to add that this uh, these propane tanks are just for light assist, as you've seen here with my weed burner. We already have a port in the back firebox there, and we're going to run another valve here and run a gas line straight back to the firebox to where all I would have to do is slide this grate out. There's the port for the gas line. I could just put a lighter cube, light a lighter cube down there before I fire the gas. Close this, stack my wood on there, go ahead and turn on my propane tanks, come over here. As soon as I hit the valve, it'll supply gas to the firebox and light them up. All right, everybody, here is the rub giveaway. All you gotta do to enter is join my Facebook group over at Joe's Barbecue House and look for the post there for the rules on how to win a set of these amazing rubs. Well, most of you know that I've used all these rubs either on my YouTube channel or in my Facebook group. And I reached out to each and every one of these companies to ask if they will contribute to this giveaway that I'm doing in my Facebook group. And they said, yes. So what I did is for each set of rubs they sent, I went ahead and purchased. The store manager, Jeff, over at Strack and Van Til, had a nice conversation with him and he had no problem matching what I wanted to buy. And I told him I'm only going to use the ones that I've used in my group or on my YouTube channel. But wait, there's more. You see that Inkbird 
digital food thermometer? Yes, it's waterproof. I've tested it. I've put it in a glass of water overnight. I had it left outside in a couple of rainstorms, and that thing is working flawless. It's super accurate. And all you got to do to win this thermometer is comment below, hashtag Inkbird, and share this video out anywhere you like. Just comment below where you shared it. So hashtag Inkbird and comment below where you shared it. This giveaway is for the U.S. only. All right, everybody. So what we have here are some chicken legs. We have some thick cut pork chops and we have some spatchcock chicken. And what I'm gonna do is use the rubs that I had bought from the companies that had contributed to this giveaway. And I'm just gonna pick some random ones and go ahead and get these seasoned up. Let's start out here with the Gator Shake. Definitely one of my favorites. They're all really my favorites. And if I haven't mentioned that these rubs here that you see this whole line is everything that I used in my Facebook group. So let's go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and sprinkle some on and mixing these is very good too and some thick meat all right let's go ahead and uh use some of the strax strax and van till's um jamaican jerk the imagine the the manager over at strax is an awesome guy he agreed to help contribute to this and i just went ahead and like i said i had purchased these and he bought the other ones for this giveaway which i thought was really nice let's go ahead and do some jamaican jerk and then i think some lemon pepper is going to do awesome on this and i don't know if you guys can see that they did a good job with these uh seasons i'm going to go ahead and mix it anytime you guys get rubbed you want to shake them Going down the line here, the last batch, we're gonna do some Cajun spice. I'm not gonna mix nothing in with this one. Just gonna see how it rolls with this. Okay. Now, for smoked Midwest barbecue, this is his sweet rub. Um, and what we're gonna use Let's see here. We're going to use the sweet heat rub and we're going to use the jalapeno garlic. I think that'll go really good with these. I definitely can smell the garlic and the habaneros. I'm at, I'm at the jalapenos. these here let's go ahead and move on down to the big guy barbecue crew this is his uh, sweet and smoky which is a really good one here that I use quite a bit and we're gonna go ahead well you know what I try this espresso this stuff's pretty good on wings we're gonna go ahead and use a seasoned salt and his sweet and smoky on these chicken breasts Okay, so what we're gonna do from here, is I'm gonna go ahead and flip these and uh, get the other side of these seasoned up. I'm gonna get the meat side of these spatchcock chickens uh, seasoned up. I'm gonna toss these, get them in the refrigerator, and I'm gonna show you how I start the Santa Marais. All right, everybody, I'm gonna show you how I light Santa Marais, pretty much even on the Weber, on that Titan Santa Marais style that I do, and of course, on these as well. A Little bit different, because I have to use more fuel. As you can see, we have a lot of food. And I'm just going to take one bag of the, the blue bag, Kingsford's charcoal. I'm just going to dump it all in the pit. Just in one pile. 
And this is a 16 pound bag. It's not the big 20 pound bag, but there you have it. Then what I'm gonna do, I already turned my propane tank on. I have my valve on. All I gotta do is turn the wand on, on my uh, weed burner here. But first I'm gonna go ahead and, oh, let's open up this one. Open up the firebox door. I'm gonna turn on the valve. Put it inside here. And you get the idea. Won't take long. I'll get this fired up. I'll spread them out. I'll add some wood chunks and we'll go from there. All right, so what I did was I just, it's only been about five minutes and I just went ahead and took my pitchfork here and just kind of spread them around. Just kind of even out the coals. So I'm gonna show you how I split wood for this style of cooking. I learned that with whole splits, like what I could put in my firebox, um, all it wants to do is smoke real bad. It's only smoking now because the charcoals are catching, but once I get those splits split, and I'll show you how I do that right now, and you're gonna see where I could build separate fires to have like little campfires going on in here for different uh, temp zones. Okay guys, so what we have here is this kindling cracker. Where I bought this on Amazon and it's uh, kindlingcracker.com. This is a cast iron setup. Here I bought this East Wing four pound mole from Amazon. Let me tell you, this thing's got a lot of weight to it. It's got a nice handle on it. I think I paid around like 40 bucks, but I'll throw the links and I'll maybe I'll throw it up on the screen here in a little bit of all the Amazon links or whatever. To make perfect kindling, place a piece of firewood inside the iron safety ring and strike with a hammer, mallet, or another piece of wood, driving the firewood down onto the splitting wedge. Built of high quality cast iron with an award winning patented design, it's made to last for generations. Plus there are no moving parts, so it's virtually maintenance free. The solid cast iron has bolt holes for permanent mounting if preferred, making it the ideal companion for your backyard stack of firewood. When you need to easily and safely cut kindling, you need the Kindling Cracker. It's the safer, faster, and easier way to make the best kindling for your fire. And basically all you do, you got your sharp edge here. You would take your split. Anything that's six inches around will fit in here. This thing is not that big. So all you do is you take your split, you set it in there. See if I get you a better angle. Be nice if you had gloves, but this handle is pretty comfortable. And you just set it on there. You just set it like that. It'll hold. I used them all in. You don't need, you, you really don't need this type of an ax hammer or a mole and ax combo. But in case I forget to bring this somewhere, now I got an ax. Or if I need to chop something down. Then all you gotta do is set it on top and give it a good whack. And there you have it. Now you're starting to make your kindling. And you want small splits in the Santa Maria. So I'm gonna split it one more time. This is pretty large. Falls in there. Let's do it again, one more time. Take this other split. All right. Now I'm just having fun. Hey guys, there you go. Now this does have two holes here. If you saw this thing moving around, which I don't mind, you could bolt it down to something if you'd like. But there you have it. A kindling splitter that works perfect. You could keep going if you'd like, but these are the perfect size for the Santa Maria setup that we're doing.
Okay, so it only took about maybe 20 seconds to split up some wood. I could have been a lot faster if I wasn't on camera. But we're just gonna go ahead and throw them right on top. Start getting some ambers built. In about 20 minutes, when all this ignites and turns into coal, I'm gonna separate some piles. And we're gonna get all that chicken and pork done. All right, so we just pulled out the chicken and the pork out of the refrigerator. And we are getting ready to put these on the Santa Maria, which is fired up and ready to go. All right, let's go ahead and start out with the Uncle Steve Shake Gator Shake. Okay, this next one will be the Strax, local grocery store of ours. This one here is the smoked Midwest barbecue. Go ahead on with the thick cut pork chops. And last, the big guy barbecue spashcock chickens. That yeah, smells so good. All right, everybody, I do apologize, but I couldn't get any more content. Every time I pull that smoker out, I, it draws a crowd or just people stop by, which is fine. It's absolutely fine with me. But I'd also like to mention that if you want to win a set of those rubs, there will be five winners. Just go join my Facebook group at Joe's Barbecue House. Again, it's Joe's BBQ House. Become a member, look for the post, and enter for your chance to win. The rules and everything will be over there. But don't forget, for this channel, I am giving away that Inkbird meat thermometer that I purchased myself. I actually purchased two of them. All you gotta do is hashtag Inkbird, share this video out, and make be sure to comment below where you shared it for your chance to win that Inkbird meat thermometer. All right, just to wrap up this video, I'd like to also mention that there will be five winners to this giveaway, and the first one to win will get their choice of what they would like to receive. I will probably do the drawing in a couple weeks, maybe three weeks, we'll see how it goes. And uh, hey, if you like what you saw, please hit that like button. If you have any questions, leave them down below. Subscribe to my channel if you're not subscribed. That would be very helpful. Thanks, and have a great day.